Jesus, and welcome to worship with the Cure of St. Joseph Pastoral Region of the Presbyterian Church of Trinidad and Tobago. Today is National Youth Sunday, and sharing in worship will be the youths of the region. Join us as we worship Christ today. Let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord, our Maker, for He is our God, and we are the people of His pasture, and the sheep of His hand. Psalm 95, verses 6 to 7. Let us pray. O oh, Heavenly Father, let me enter your courts today with praise and thanksgiving. I praise you for who you are, the one who created heaven and earth perfect and loving, gracious and merciful. I am your child, whom you love greatly. Unite me to the great family of believers, those here on earth and those who came before me. Lord, I surrender my heart to you, the God of the impossible, for whom nothing is too hard. O oh Lord, my Father in heaven, I worship you. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole hearts. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways. To the glory of your name. Amen. Assurance of Pardon Based on Psalm 103 and Hebrews 10, 
Hear these words of assurance. The Lord is compassionate and gracious, slow to anger, abounding in love. As far as the east is from the west, so far has he removed our transgressions from us. We have been made holy through the sacrifice of the blood of Jesus Christ once for all. This is God's gospel promise. To forgive our sins and give us eternal life by grace alone because of Christ's one sacrifice finished on the cross. The scripture reading is taken from Ephesians chapter 6 verses 10 to 18 and it is entitled the whole armor of God. Finally, build up your strength in union with the Lord and by means of his mighty power. Put on all the armor that God gives you so that you will be able to stand up against the devil's evil tricks. For we are not fighting against human beings but against the wicked spiritual forces and heavenly will, the rulers, authorities, and cosmic powers of the dark age. So put on God's armor now, then the evil day comes, you will be able to resist the enemy's attacks, and after fighting to the end, you will still hold your ground. So stand ready with truth as a belt tied round your waist, with righteousness as your breastplate, and as your shoes, the readiness to announce the good news of peace. At all times, carry faith as a shield, for with it you will be able to put out all the burning arrows shot by the evil one, and accept salvation as a helmet, and the word of God as sword which the Spirit gives you. Do all this in prayer, asking for God's help. Pray on every occasion as the Spirit leads. For this reason, keep alert and never give up. Pray always for all God's people. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God for all his words. This is my prayer in the desert When all that within me feels dry This is my prayer in my hunger and need My God is the God who provides This is my prayer in the fire In weakness or trial or pain there is a faith through the more worth than gold, so we find me, Lord, through the flame. And I will bring praise, I will bring praise, no weapon formed against me shall remain. I will rejoice, and I will declare. 
God is my victory and He is here. This is my prayer in the battle when triumph is still on its way. I am a conqueror, a co-heir with Christ, so firm on His promise I'll stand. And I will bring praise, I will bring praise, no weapon formed against me shall remain. I will rejoice, and I will declare, God is my victory. life in every season you are still God I have a reason to sing I have a reason to worship all of my life in every season you are still God I have a reason to sing I have a reason to worship, and I will bring praise, I will bring praise, no weapon formed against me shall remain, I will rejoice, and I will declare, God is my victory, and He is here, I will bring praise, I will bring no weapon formed against me shall remain. I will rejoice and I will declare God is my victory and He is here. This is my prayer in the harvest when favor and providence flow. I know I'm filled to be emptied again The seed I've received I will sow Hello brothers and sisters in Christ You may have gathered from the hymns we would have joined in singing and the scripture read to us that this National Youth Sunday, our youths are focusing on the armor of God. We will be talking about the different pieces, their uses, and of course, why we even need to wear this armor. Before we begin, let us come to God in prayer. Let us pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts be acceptable unto you, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. Our scripture taken from Ephesians gives us Paul's warning and breakdown of the different pieces of God's armor. This comes at a time when he is bringing his letter to a close and focuses on some tools and equipment near him. Paul has chosen to use this metaphor of putting on armor and in order to understand what he is talking about, we must embrace this metaphor and extend it as much as it would make sense to. Now, although I refer to it as a metaphor, it's not to say that the armor isn't real, and it's not to say that the need for it isn't real. You see, he uses this strong image of putting on armor because we need to understand that as followers of Christ, we will need to be prepared for a battle, and that is very real. Why else would he even put on armor? Armor is specifically designed for a purpose, that is, to protect the wearer against the attacks from the foe. Now, of course, the whole idea of what armor looks like has evolved over time, as the forms of battles and wars have evolved, as people have gone from fighting with swords to guns. To follow the description Paul uses, we must think back on what armor would look like in the days when people fought with swords. That armor would have been specifically designed to protect the wearer from any attacks from a sword. Hence, it would have been made from a material that a sword would have a hard time cutting through. 
and it would cover all the main places of forward strike while allowing the mirror mobility. From verse 10 in Ephesians chapter 6, Paul describes the challenges that we will face every day, and he describes what we are going to be fighting against. This armor is supposed to protect us from the devil's evil tricks, and is supposed to help us fight against spiritual forces. To describe the quality of the armor, I decided to look at this quote from Paradise Lost, book 6, which goes, but the sword of Michael from the armory of God was given him tempered so that neither keen nor solid might resist that edge. It met the sword of Satan with steep force to smite descending and then half cut share nor stay, but with swift wheel reversed, deep entering shared all his right side. Then Satan first knew pain. So this extract is explaining what happened during that holy war where Satan decided to stage his revolt against God and he and his accomplices were fighting against God's army of angels led by Michael. What I want for us when we think about this image is to focus on the description of Michael's sword when Milton says it comes from the armory of God. This is the same God that has given all of us as his followers armor to put on to be protected and fight against the devil's evil tricks. It is armor made by the same one that made the sword Michael used to make Satan feel pain for the first time ever by cutting through his sword. And that is the kind of quality we're getting as soldiers in God's army. Back to the scripture in Ephesians, Paul gives us a warning based on his own experiences following Christ. And given this, we should listen and pay close attention to what he says. So, when he talks about things such as using truth as the belt, we can trust that this comes from a place of him knowing that the only thing that will help us keep this armor together and prevent it from falling apart is if we are truthful to ourselves and to God. We must be honest to be part of this army, because if we want to be considered followers of Christ, we must turn away from any wrongdoing. When he talks about righteousness as a breastplate, it comes from his experience of knowing that a follower of God must be a person who knows what is morally right and will do such. The breastplate is a large part of the armor. It's one of the first things and most noticeable pieces of the armor. So he wants us to show this righteousness to all, including the enemy because they are the ones who are going to try to sway us with their attacks. He talks about our shoes being the readiness to announce the good news of peace, because as God's people, we must always be ready to spread this good news. So this readiness will be our shoes, because this is what will enable us to travel great distances to carry this message. Paul states that faith is our shield, because the only thing that can protect us from the tricks of the devil is our faith in Christ. That is our strongest defense. As soldiers, we are going to need something to attack the enemy with. And Paul says that to do that, we must use the word of God. This is the strongest weapon in our arsenal and the one that can do the most damage to the enemy. We understand the quality and makeup of this armor. But why do we even need it? Why do we need this protection? Paul knew that as followers of Christ, we would have to endure hardships. And throughout scripture, you will see that we must accept that there will be hardships to face as a follower of Christ. 2 Timothy chapter 2, verses 11 to 12 tells us that if we have died with him, we shall also continue to live with him. If we continue to endure, we shall also rule with him. God knows who his followers are and would not have us serve him unprepared. A king isn't going to send his soldiers into battle unprepared, because if he did, that would be sending his soldiers to their deaths, and it would be ensuring he loses the battle. That is why, as followers, we must wear this armor to be prepared for those challenges and to ensure we do our part to defeat the enemy. Through prayer, we will be able to put on this armor 
because prayer is a master key that unlocks the resources of heaven for God's children to enjoy the blessings which have been prepared for them. Prayer brings together and activates the promises that God has made to all those who believe and have accepted what God has done for us in Christ Jesus. Prayer draws us into the very presence of God, where we are able to make known our thanksgiving and complete dependence upon God for who we are and what we have. It is a tool that we are able to use at any time in our lives, no matter what we are doing or where our minds may be. That tells us that if we can pray at any time, we can wear this armor at any time. God has given us all that is required to live a God-fearing life in His presence. God desires the very best for and from all His children. He has given to us all that we could ever need in order for us to be successful in achieving the purpose for which He has sent us into this world. God does not want us to live life separate from Him. He does not want us, His soldiers, to lose this battle. Instead, He gives to us all the important tools so that we will be able to be victors and overcomers in this world. Today, we are being challenged to listen and accept the word of caution issued by God's servant, St. Paul. Be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. Put on all of God's armor so that you will be able to stand firm against all the strategies of the evil one. Stand up, stand up for Jesus, ye soldiers of the cross. Lift high his royal banner, it must not suffer loss. From victory unto victory, his army shall he lead. Till every for his vanquished, and Christ his Lord indeed. Stand up, stand up for Jesus, the trumpet's call obey. Forth to the mighty conflict, in this his glorious day. He that are brave now serve him against unnumbered foes. Let courage rise with danger and the strength to strength oppose. Stand up, stand up for Jesus, stand in his strength alone. The harm of flesh will fail you, ye dare not trust your own. Put on the gospel armor, and the watching unto prayer. Where calls the voice of duty, be never wanting there. Stand up, stand up for Jesus, the strife will not be long. This day the noise of battle, the next the victor's song. To him that overcometh, a crown of life shall be. He with the King of glory shall reign eternally. Good morning, everybody. I invite you to bow your heads and close your eyes as I say the prayer of the people. Almighty and merciful God, we come to you in prayer, confident of your love in Jesus Christ. 
give air to our prayer for the world and our needs. We pray for those among us who grieve, for those who have lost loved ones to diseases, for those who have lost loved ones to hatred and injustice. We know that this happens even when you don't see it in headlines. And so we ask you to bring comfort, solace, and even joy. We pray for those among us who struggle, for those who face addiction, for those who face financial hardship, for those who face painful relationship and loss of purpose. We pray for our civic leaders as we eagerly and anxiously listen for guidance amid the new development and patterns of the COVID-19 pandemic. Provide the government officials with the wisdom of judgment and compassionate heart to serve the public, overcoming the challenges and temptations that come with their station. This morning, we come together to pray with one voice as our Lord taught us. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from all evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Good morning. God loves a cheerful giver, and I pray that he receives our gifts as he gave to us his only begotten son. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him, all creatures here below. Praise Him above the heavenly hosts. Praise Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen. Let us pray. We bring what we have, O God. We know there are many around us who are in need. And while we cannot do everything we know, that you can take what we offer and use it to make a difference. So take these gifts brought with glad and generous hearts and use them for your work. Amen.
us and keep us. May the Lord make his face to shine upon us and be gracious unto us. May the Lord lift up the light of his countenance upon us and give us his peace, both now and forevermore. Good morning, fellow worshippers. Following are the announcements. The St. Andrews Theological College, in partnership with the Board of Youth Affairs, is launching a new online course for those involved in youth work in their church, starting on September 18, 2021. There are also several online courses being offered by the SATC. Details and link to apply can be sourced from your secretary or an elder. The Presbyterian Secondary Schools Board of Education wishes to advise that all applications for teaching positions within the five Presbyterian Secondary Schools must be made through their official website, www.pssboe.com. Sunday school sessions continue to be offered online every Sunday through Kira Presbyterian Church from 8 a.m., and St. Joseph Presbyterian Church from 10 a.m. We thank the young persons from our five churches who took part in today's special Youth Sunday service. We invite you to join us again next Sunday at 9 a.m. when student minister Stefan Wilson and the St. Joseph Presbyterian Church will lead us in worship. Friends, we provide the respective banking information for the five churches in the pastoral region. Should you wish to have an offering or a special donation received online on your behalf? As well, we provide the contact numbers for our Reverend, Presiding Elder, and Clerk of Session, should you wish to contact one of them. We thank you for joining with us in worship today and pray for God's continued blessing on you in the week ahead. Thank you. Thank you.